Um, first thing you should do, find someone who's better at the job than you and give them the reins because then it frees you up to do the things that you want to do. And I just remember after that conversation, going back and telling David, you know, I think it makes sense. Like, and then, you know, and then talking to Vinny and talking to Joe, that like maybe this is something that we should be offering to Jose because he can do so much, you know, better than, than I ever could in this role. And, and, and I recognize that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 15. That is 1515. I can't believe we've gone this far. Afternoon Tea Podcast, and it's a special one. Not only are we ending the season, uh, being that December is coming and ho, ho, ho. Um, but we thought we were going to make this a little fun. We're going to take us down a little love story called TTT. And we're going to be talking to some of the, uh, the, the not only just the founders, but also the, some of the people that make a um, make TTT what, what it is. So I am super excited uh, to introduce you guys um, to the ever so handsome David Hobbs, uh, co-founder, the amazingly talented and I can't look any more Christmassy if I try Josephine Wong. The spectacular and so intelligent Vincent Lee and the ever so handsome Jose Hernandez. So Josephine, not only is a founder, she's also our VP of design. David is our VP of operations, Jose, CEO, and Vincent, our VP of engineering. And this is also a special time because this is the 10th year anniversary of TTT and uh, we're just going to have some fun. But before I do that, like I said, we're on the 15th year, or 15th year. We're not there yet. We're getting there. We're on the 15th episode. And I just want to thank all those who have, uh, who've listened to the show, who've made it, you know, as I don't want to call it a, a runaway success. I just say it's, it's been a lot of fun for, for, for me and the team. And I can't believe that we've had so many people ask to be part of this little experiment. So just thank you for listening. Thank you for putting time to, uh, you know, to, to, to put time in your life to, to, to listen to us ramble about all things interesting in, in the Vancouver entrepreneurial scene. And I also want to give a classic ho, ho, ho out to the, the producers of the show, uh, the, the ever so famously fancy Pauline Lee, as well as Aaron. Uh, you guys make a huge difference, and I want to thank you. But as we go into this, I think I want to start off by talking a little bit about how we all met and I think the David and I part is a little bit understanding in the fact that we probably met before we were even born. Um, but Joe, I'm going to touch a little bit on how we met, but I want to hear your first thoughts. Where where do you remember where we first met? Mm, I think it's maybe 12 or 11 years ago. So I was still a print designer and I wanted to learn more about interactive design. So I went to UBC, um, there's an interactive uh, design continuous studies program and there's a co-op opportunity and they placed me in the uh, Canadian manufacturing exporters. And that's where I met you, Chris. Uh, you were my manager at that time. Which, which, which was amazing. But I want to tell you my perspective of this, Joe, because I got a call from UBC and they said, we have a co-op student that you can't say no to. And I'm like, I don't need a co-op student. And they said, I don't think you understand how talented she is. You can't say no to her. And so I thought, you know what? I'll give that a chance. I'll just, I'll just give that a chance. And I wish I knew who that was because I owe them a keg of beer. Not even, not even, not even a single beer. I owe them a keg of beer for introducing us, Joe, because I instantly not only recognized how much, you know, I love you as a person because you have such an amazing soul and amazing spirit. And um, but just how much fun you are to work with and, and how much. I love to watch the creative process of the of the things you you, you make and you craft, and uh, I'm just in awe every day that I work with you. So so whoever made that magic happen, thank you UBC. I I I I'm 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 really 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 um it's a Christmas gift. Ho ho ho. Oh thank you. Then I need to send them a truckload of beer. <laughs> a truckload of even better, even better. Well, you know, I think the next because in the chapter of TTT would be Vincent Lee. Um, you know, we could ask Vincent to tell the story, but David, can you tell the story of how we first met Vincent? I think this makes the most sense. Well, I'd love to get Vincent's perspective of this. If you know, <laughs> I'm getting older, and as I get older, my memory's not quite what it is, but I do remember the first time meeting Vincent. We had our first little office, and this little office basically was our first real office, and maybe it fit 
legally two people and there was probably seven of us in there. I mean, we, we were all squeezed in and, and whatnot. And Vincent came in to interview. And I remember people were programming kind of against the wall and Vincent was showing me the app that he was working on. And, uh, you know, it comes in and he shows me this iOS app and he kind of, it's a 3D rendering cartoon image basically of a face. And it suddenly starts talking to me and everything. I'm like, damn, okay, wait, this guy's hired. So he was just like instantly, instantly had had me in awe. And uh, so that's my quick version. Vincent, what's your perspective on that? Because I, I want to add when I first really met you afterwards mm -hmm. and we were out at Harbor Air, which is the first client that we had, but but am I close to, uh, yeah. you know, things that, like that? That's, that's quite close to the fact. Uh, so it was September 2013. That was closer to the end of my master's program. I was looking for a job. So I interviewed with David. The small little detail that was not the fact was that we were actually meeting in a huge, gigantic meeting room, nice which fits nice like a hundred people there, but there were only two of us in the room. It was echoing yeah. and stuff. <laughs> we were using a shared meeting room. That's how I first met David. I remember later I met Chris in the office. That's the small office that David mentioned. Yeah. But the funny thing is Chris actually met me before mm -hmm. with, like that I couldn't even remember because I joined the uh, iOS meetup early on and he actually met me there, but I don't remember. So sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, but I got to add my favorite Vince though is because we were, were doing a project for Harbor Air. And I met him out in Richmond, um, close to the Harbor Air Terminal. And that was the first time I saw his big car. And all I thought is, because Vincent, he's not the, the, the biggest guy on the planet, but his car might have been. And uh, I just thought, wow, that's pretty gangster. I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, <laughs> you it's stuck cool. a student car, 2000 bucks, and it's driving. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. It was it gets, awesome. It, it was gets awesome. you there. It gets you there. <laughs> well, the next person I guess we should talk about how we met was one of our first interns. You weren't a co-op student. You were an intern. And I love telling the story of how... Jose Hernandez, our intern, is now the CEO, and we're blessed to have it. Um, Jose, do you want to talk about your first thoughts about meeting all of us and how you came into TNT? TTT? TNT. That's a different. That's a different company. <laughs> um, Very tasty, though. <laughs> <laughs> Very tasty. Yeah. So, as part of the MBA program, you are uh, encouraged to do an internship. Um, so I remember in the MBA, they prepared us for what is supposed to be very difficult interviews. Uh, so they're going to ask you things to, to basically come up with a solution for something right away. And, and uh, the first time I, I interviewed, uh, I applied for the job at, at TTT because um, the job post was amazing. I remember it was um, the possibility to make make the dreams for people happen right um we were we were doing products at the time in in the um in in the mba program and and that opportunity seemed uh perfect for what i wanted to do as a next step and um, and i came to the interview hyper prepared um, mm -hmm. and uh, i was expecting like uh, uh consulting job type of uh, of an interview and um I remember you, you, you guys asked me a lot of questions in the first 30 minutes and then we just had fun and start chatting like regular people do. And I, and I said, I just want to work here because it's just the most amazing environment. Um, and that was my, my first recollection of meeting you guys. Uh, it, the, the interview was with, uh, with Vinny, with David and with, uh, uh, with Chris. So it was a pretty interesting one. <laughs> well, I'm glad it worked out. Well, I, I, I remember it really well because, Jose, I just remember um, we, it was the first MBA sort of opportunity that we were kind of looking at. And I remember just finishing the interview and just looking around and could, I don't know if I could swear on this. I won't swear on it. I'll just say like, oh, my God, that guy's amazing. And I just thought, you know, personality wise, we just caught on fire right away. But the questions that you were asking was like calling us out on a couple of things, which was exactly what we needed to. It was just it was perfect. And right away, I just knew I wanted to work with you. So so I was very happy that day. Oh, that's that is that is so, that is so truthful. That is so truthful. Well, you know, I, I want to touch on one thing because David and I, uh, you know, we've been we've been. 
we've we've founded a couple of companies over the years, but you know we we've always had it a challenge just because I would say we're a little bit gun shy from, from our first founding, David, up in the UBC when uh, we, we founded a, a great company called liftpasses.com in the ski industry. But I would say we, we got a little challenge. We got a little burnt by, uh, by, by co-founders. I, I don't need to go into too many details. It's just, it, it made it difficult to trust people. And, you know, I've always had been really blessed because obviously it's hard not to trust your twin brother. Um, yeah, you know, I've been really blessed to always work with David and have a, have a great relationship, but it wasn't Mom's until- a great referee. Mom is a great referee. I'll give I'll give you that one. I will give you that one. But it wasn't until I met Josephine, and then I realized that I could have a, another partner uh, in there. And I I, I want to actually thank you, Joe, because I, I I was really 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 it was difficult to trust people. But the second I met you, and the second I worked with you, and the second I realized how hardworking you were. Uh, you know, I just, I just remember, well, this is someone who I can trust. I remember when David and I talked about founding TTT and all I can remember is all I wanted was you to be part of it. And I told David, this is what I want to be part of it. And I'm just really glad that you agreed to come on this journey with us. Um, D David, do you remember the day Chinese that we food. actually, this, I'm sorry. Is this over Chinese food when we went no. to White Spot? Exactly. Do you remember the time when we realized we are a company we better to actually incorporate? Can you can you yeah. tell a little bit about that story? Well, actually, so we, we would always joke because we'd say let's go for Chinese food. We'd end up at White Spot, and 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 I think they were kind of making fun of my my choices there. But uh, no, I remember actually it was we went to Burgoo on Fourth uh, Avenue or Broadway, and that's where we kind of talked and we kind of came to the conclusion that we were going to move forward and and do something. And I, I just remember because Chris brought Josephine in. I didn't really know her that well, but it, just talking to her, I was like right away it's comfort. And again, I can feel the same way with Jose and Vincent. It's it's like we could talk about anything. Thing, and I feel like there's a lot of trust and that's why again it works really well between us all but right away Josephine was just so warm and so like understanding and so talented and uh, so no I, I as soon as Chris said let's make this company I'm like why do we need to design it we're an engineering company was my first thought and then Joe convinced me within seconds that I get it now and and so no I I, I couldn't be happier with uh, with you know doing this lifelong journey with Josephine kind of my sister here so yeah oh yeah and <laughs> it's very flattering <laughs> yeah and and you know i feel the same way too like i've worked at good companies and also bad companies but what um you know david chris you guys impressed me is the integrity and i know that like you guys will never screw me <laughs> if i you know go into business with you guys so well, uh, uh, and then some, and then some, do you know, do you know the, what the one meal I remember is Joe, you, right. We, we started the company and then you went off to Tai, I think Taipei. Um, and then we actually got our first client and you came back and then we went out for Chinese food again at white spot to tell you how excited we were going, Joe, this is a real thing. Like, this is actually a real thing. And, you know, and, and then and the next thing we know, we, we, well, it actually became a real thing, um, which was which was super exciting. Well, tell you what, um, why don't we talk a little bit about this? Um, how, Vincent? I, th I think you were actually one of the first people to really bring a true professionalism in terms of, of our engineering department. How would you describe how you chose the team? How how you tried to find people that fit for for the TTT engineering team? What what was a priority for you? We're talking about hiring here? Yeah, hiring, creating the team. There are a lot of thoughts put into the engineering hiring over the years. A lot of people actually come and ask me, why are you hiring like highly educated people for a consulting team? And mm -hmm. most consulting companies, like outsourcing companies, they tend to hire maybe college students or maybe not that well-educated people for, I guess, low price and stuff like that. But that it was never our choice. And we always tend to hire good, well-educated people from UBCSFU, master and PhDs. That was what we were always aiming for because we want to hire a group of smart people in order to achieve bigger stuff. And I don't think our end goal is just to be, be a, a, an outsourcing company that solves clients' problems. We want to be creative. That's why we, we, we always care about our UI, UX, our care about our product. We, are not hiring people to solve a problem. We are hiring people to create products. And having an engineering culture really uh, 
help us to achieve that. So that is kind of my priority. I do, I do want to hire smart people. Besides that, there are the integrity part, the, the passionate part and all of it. But the, that, that's the, the one main point I want to make. And, and also, I think it's made a huge difference, a huge difference. Um, you know, I, I, I want to touch a little bit. Well, oh, first off, I mean, Jose, you went from, again, MBA intern, which I mean, I don't want to make it sound like it's co-op student. It's far from it because the second you came, we instantly recognized, wow, you're the one who's going to bring the most change to this company. But when you came, and, and, and this is even before when I guess, what was your title before? Was it director of sales or? Before TTT, you mean? Well, no, yeah, director well, of sales. Yeah, director of sales. Oh, no. Or VP yeah. of sales. Okay. But the thing that impressed me the most is the recognition you had that our processes needed to evolve. What did you see when you came as we're like, you know, this has to be done in the first year. This has to be done in the second year. Like what were the processes that you saw that needed to be changed and optimized? So I, I guess the way I approach any process improvement is uh, first understanding what's happening. Um, I remember I had a lot of conversations with you, with David, with Joe, with Vinny about how do you do this? How do you do X? And can we document what we're doing here and, and that? And, I, and that really took most of my um, summer and, and, and that fall just to understand what's going on. And if there was something that could be improved or needed to be improved, because um, often if, if you try to suggest something new without understanding how things currently work, uh, First, you're going to face a lot of resistance, and second, not every process, even though it might sound better or 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 uh, it could be helpful for the company, it, it doesn't work exactly for for everybody. So um, the first thing was understanding. The second thing was uh, once we recognize there are certain areas of improvement, bringing the right people to support that and. Uh, Going back a little bit to the question that you asked, Vinny, um, I guess the way I think about hiring is this is where we want to be in the next six months, a year, two years. Who can we bring that can execute and improve that vision? And uh, we've been very lucky uh, with with our with our hiring because we uh, we've managed to 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 bring people that can take it always one step further. There is, you can always imagine a, a process or, or a certain um, goal to be reached in a certain way. But if you bring people and empower people to do um, their job, they're always gonna uh, make it better, right? So we've been very lucky and, and that's how um, we've moved from, I would say, 10, 10 to 12 people when, when I was in to, to, uh, to 40. Very nice. Very now. nice. And growing. And growing. Well, you know, you know, one of the, one of the first things is cause I mean, one, one of the things I think you've done so well is you fought me in a really positive way to make me a believer. And I remember I said, okay, we're going to hire Jose. And then the next thing we got to do is we got to hire a salesperson. And you told me right away going, that is the silliest thing to do because what we really need to do is look at where our efficiencies and our bleed line is and fix that. Because if we start putting gas on the fire and then all of a sudden we have all this, you know, this traction, well, we're just going to be losing money on the, on the, uh, on the, on the bottom end of our business. And we need to improve on that. Do, do you remember that? Is yeah. One of the so that, that was kind of the, the, the leaky bucket strategy. Yep. So, um, there was um, at the beginning. It, it's logical when you're starting; you don't have enough people to service a project. Uh, so it was it was not uncommon to have either designers or engineers being the front person um, servicing a client. So um, what we did there was start incorporating individuals that would actually manage the project. And there were a lot of uh, uh, improvements to be made because we were um, learning as we go with with uh, project management. And there was it was clear in our head that the 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 requirement was let's make it happen for the client no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that no matter what was generating 
uh, that are some of our projects were not uh, uh, didn't have a positive margin. So thinking about how to fix that before bringing more sales was one of the the the, the focus of that. I would say first year and a half. Uh, I remember David had a, a, a spreadsheet where we could see our products being uh, uh, red, yellow, and green, and it was pretty satisfying to see how suddenly the red disappeared. Um, so making that improvement and then bringing people made more sense at that time. Oh, for sure, for sure. No, I, 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 I always, uh, sorry, Chris, just really quick, because oh, no, that spreadsheet, I always reflect on it around Christmas time, because it was <laughs> Christmas time, probably two years into uh, Two Tall Totems, not, not even TTD Studios at the time, but it was Two Tall Totems, and I created that spreadsheet, because I wanted to see where we are with our clients, and you're 100% right, it was a lot of red. And all I saw, and so what we were measuring was we weren't measuring finance, we weren't measuring anything. We were measuring goodwill and um, just basically the, pers the perspective that we believed that the clients had in us at that time. And it was all in red. And so we were failing. And that was one of the biggest things that we had to turn around. And I remember it was Christmas and literally two years in, we didn't have really good processes. We were just kind of doing small projects at the time. This is a long time ago. And thinking, I don't know if I want to do this. I, I actually thought to myself, do I even want to be doing this anymore? Because I'm not delivering what I truly believe in. And you're 100% right. When we had that from go from all reds to yellows to all green, and now I'd look at it and it would be all green pretty much for every client. And and honestly, I'm so happy that I never made a decision to, to do anything drastic at the time. It was a really good recognition tool, but I was just, the day that it all turned green was just like, that was Christmas day for me. So. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, you know, and I, and I, I want to reflect, I mean, as, as, as I'm sure our, our, our loyal listeners here can, can understand, I mean, the, 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 the decision to have Jose come in, uh, you know, wasn't something we took lately uh, as, you know, as, as, a, as a CEO. Uh, um, but I remember it was a conversation I had with uh, Chris Priex, uh, who was actually the very first uh, interview that we ever did, uh, Major Tom's founder, who, um, you know, I just, had, I just had a chat with him and he told me, um, First thing you should do, find someone who's better at the job than you and give them the reins because then it frees you up to do the things that you want to do. And I just remember after that conversation, going back and selling David, you know, I think it makes sense. Like, and then, you know, and then talking to Vinny and talking to Joe, that like maybe this is something that we should be offering to Jose because he can do so much, you know, better than, than I ever could in this world. And, and, and I recognize that. But I think the second that I knew that the decision was right was when we made the announcement at one of our learn at lunch, you know, town halls and to announce it. And Mitch Ganton came up to me and he said, best decision you ever made. Mitchie gave the thumb of approval, which made me go, damn, I mean, yes, you, you, you recognize it. And you know what? I don't think, I don't think we've looked back, you know, we've just evolved yeah. as a company since that day. Um, and well, can, I, can I give a compliment on that? Because, do. because uh, so I do everyone's as, as operations, I, I give uh, reviews for everyone, or at least I'm usually in the room. And one of the questions we ask is who helped you the most during the year, during the six months. And everyone says Jose. And I'm like, why is like, do, do you work one-on-one -on -one with everyone? And I think the answer is probably yes. yes. I, I mean, I don't know <laughs> how you have time to, but everyone recognizes that you're making their life and their job uh, better and they're you're making them better at their job so uh, yeah i just want to recognize that oh for sure thank for you sure. for that so so for for me it's um it goes back to the question of trust um i, I always tell david and and and, and chris's story um in, in my last uh, job opportunity i had the the, the, the I had the chance to see how a team grew from uh, literally, I was the second employee to uh, more than a hundred people between Mexico and China. And um, there was a lot of things, very similar things uh, uh, applied there that I, that I didn't see, but I never got the chance. Uh, I never got the chance to run uh, the company. And uh, the fact that you guys trusted in me and give me this opportunity means the world to me. That's the, the reality. And the, uh, and it just it, it just shows um, an incredible um, trust because this is um, this is your baby. This is something that you've been working for 
so long and making sure that the the the, the, the culture is there, the company is there, the, the services there, the clients are there, the reputation is there. And I and I and I've been been entrusted with this. It's just a a huge responsibility, but just a, it feels great. Well, we, we're 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 honored, and honestly, we're excited about where it's going to go. So thank thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, look, now that we've talked about all these these you know the the lovable, huggable, uh, wonderful things about what uh, makes uh, TTT TTT, I want to talk a little bit about storms weathered. Uh, some fun things that, you know, almost had us on our knees, almost actually crunched us, um, but made, made us stronger. Um, Joe, I, I don't want to name names of clients because I don't think that's ever necessary. But do you remember a certain project in the early days? Um, Please don't say with, Hong Kong. That's out of Hong Kong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, can you tell us a, li a little bit about the challenges you faced with that, please? Well, it was like our early days, so um, <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell the, the story without, you know, saying something negative, but I think, you know, like we also have some responsibility too, because uh, there was no project management, so it's really hard to control the, the scope of the project and the client expectations, so the project kept getting bigger and bigger, and then it just went nowhere. That, that's a good description, but but I would honestly say one other part of it was the client became a real bully, and one of the big learnings that we had is that we need to fire clients like that faster because Joe, you are way more important to me than any project ever. Okay, <laughs> and it became I, I think you know you need to have a lot of credit that you weathered that yourself without really telling us how much of a bully the situation had become. And I think the greatest relief we had was when we just decided, okay, you know what, this is done. But then the client also ran away from us and didn't, didn't pay. And I don't know if you remember, but um, that was a, a real kick in the teeth. Um, David, as, as operations, do you, want to, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the challenges we faced when all of a sudden we had no money in the bank? Well, I mean, that sucked. But I just want to go back to something that, yeah. uh, you know, I, I wish it happened because this client... Um, and I won't name her or him, sorry, them. Um, they were very two-faced. In other words, just going back to what jo Joe was going through, Joe was being treated very, very, very poorly. But every time that Chris or I went on the call, she treated us very nicely and we had no idea. So if I can give one advice to anybody out there that's listening, if you're getting treated poor poorly by a client, please speak up about it because the management, the, the partners, the, who, the the people that love you will step in and do something right away. But if they don't know about it, don't feel like you need to put up with it. Because I just remember thinking after Joe told me, I thought, no, she'd never do that. And then I witnessed it in something. And it just opened my eyes. I'm like, oh, my God, pull the parachute. We do not need to deal with this person. And and I just wish that it came up earlier. Um, you know, honestly, I, I wish it came up earlier. Um, as for the financial side, I mean, I don't know what to say other than we didn't pay ourselves for a long time because it all comes down to making sure that your staff and everyone else gets paid. And, and uh, we went for quite a while before we kind of got out of that hole. But we'll call that the MBA of uh, learning because we learned a lot of uh, what not to do and what to do. And, and, and process to put on things. So I would say that that was what I would call an investment in the company that we made, that if we were going to move forward, we were going to do it right. Um, that loss is a huge kick, but it allowed us to learn so much. It, it, it took us to level one to level two very, very quickly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely agree with that. Um, well, there was, there was, you know, we had the, uh, that was, you know, the, 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 in the tens of thousands of dollars uh, kind of, Screw you very yeah. much. When you're a startup, the, that's not good. <laughs> that's, well, that's that's not good. But you know what? Well, actually, I'll, I'll reflect a little on that too because I remember, you know, I had one of um, one of the uh, the video meetups, and one of the one of the guys who I have a lot of respect for, uh, he gave a speech in it about how he always paid himself first, and then you know the team, if they had money left over, they would get paid. And I was just shocked that anyone would even consider that as, as something, you know, especially that we'd gone through not being paid for. It was a couple of, you know, six months, I think yeah, it was, it was at one point. It was quite yeah. a while, but you know what? We, 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 we became that much stronger for it. And then that prepped us up for Wavefront. <laughs> Jose, yeah. do you remember the day that we had learned about, uh, about that situation? Yeah. 
vividly. <laughs> <laughs> and so for, for those who, who don't know, Wavefront was uh, an accelerator that um, operated in Vancouver. And um, they approached us to, to see if we could work with one of their client partners. Um, we said yes, we started the project, things went really well, uh, we continue working with that client. Um, but we didn't have too much visibility about the, the, what, the things that Wayfront was agreeing to or the legal uh, uh, for that matter. And one day they, um, uh, they told us for, for perfectly valid legal reasons, the client is not gonna pay us. So uh, if that happens, we are uh, going bankrupt. And our relationship was with Wavefront and not with the client. So the, the things that we learned there was, uh, first, if you're going to service somewhere, someone, do it directly. Don't do it with a third party. And the second one is uh, make sure that no matter how um, uh, strong the personal relationship might be, uh, make sure that you have uh, a good understanding on 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 the legal side of things and on the on the financial side of things. So it was a big learning, and and since then we haven't had any any problems. But yeah, it was a it was. Do, a do you remember problem. the day though? You remember the day? Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. Where, where where were we when we found out? I we were in the BC Tech Summit, right? Yeah, yeah. and, and we, we found out in the newspaper like everyone else. <laughs> yes. It was, yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. And What's I, interesting, I, that was that was three years ago. And I actually reached out to the lawyers today. And uh, uh, magically enough, they were going to send us an email on Friday. And, um, you know, it looks like something <laughs> something's finally coming to a close, but it takes so long on these situations. So, yeah, but yeah. that 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 loss was a, a huge learning. But it also showed that we were, you know, ready to weather things because that was do we even want to say the number of how, of how bad oh, that it was, was? It was published. It was published. Oh, yeah. Well, then what, what was the number, David? Do you remember? It was just in south of 300,000. I mean, it was a lot of money. Yeah. So. Yeah. Three, yeah, that was, time, yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We got we, we learned a lot from it. And, you know, I, I, I think I remember that when that day happened, the biggest thing that I was thinking about was all those great people that worked for Wavefront, though. You like yeah. as much as it, is, it did affect us is there was some great people that worked at Wavefront. And I was really concerned about them. Uh, which, which, you know, um, I think says a lot about, about, mm -hmm. but Chris, but Wavefront was doing a lot of good things. It was unfortunate, the whole situation. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, it sucked for everyone at Wavefront. It sucked for all their partners. It sucked for Vancouver uh, and Canada for that matter. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Um, okay. Well, you know what, let's talk about a negative and David, maybe, maybe you can talk about this, but this would be the day that I considered us to be ready to play in the big leagues was when we gave a deposit check back and maybe you and Vincent can talk a little bit about this project again without naming names because we don't need names in it. But um, David, can you, can you set that up and maybe Vin, you can help color it with them. I, I assume, you know what we're talking about here, Vincent? <laughs> no. Yeah. I wasn't this sure. Is, actually, this is the project for me. Wood Buffalo. Yeah. So, yeah. So we were uh, offered a project that was in the, the, the gas community in Alberta, basically. And it was really a carte blanche. Let's come up with something. And as an engineer and as a designer, this is really, really cool. But um, the partner um, that we were dealing with, um, I guess they deal in a different way with um, uh, the, the people that are in the um, commercial industry or uh, the PR firms or something like that. Cause um, they just asked us to do some things but we needed them to get a foundation done before we were able to kind of do anything. Cause there was a timeline to get things done and nothing was getting done. Nothing was getting done. And then they turned around and they said, well, why didn't you do it? And all I could think of was like, well, that wasn't our responsibility. And uh, Josephine kept getting design things sent to him and or designed things sent to her. And we'd look at it. It's like, Hey, it looked pretty good week one. And then week two, it seemed to go backwards instead of forwards. And then by week five, it's just nothing had changed. So we just knew that it was time to pull pull the uh, shoot on that one. And, and we walked away, but it never felt so good to walk away from a project. Oh, I, I, yeah. Well, and then I think, I think David, what you did is you, you contact them because they got to be, a, and it's another one of those bully situations where they were getting, the, the partner was getting a little bit belligerent unnecessarily. Cause I guess they realized they're going to be under the gun, which showed us that 
oh, we're about to be thrown under the bus. Like we're the ones who are going to be done. So, so we gave them back a significant check, the deposit check they gave us. And all I remember is thinking, what a relief. We just gave back a $50,000 check and it doesn't even feel like it's going to really affect our business. Like yeah. that, that was a real positive, I think. But again, this is years and years ago. And mm-hmm. I'm just, the big disappointment that I have is as, as engineers and designers, what a great opportunity. Like, honestly, it's like carte blanche, let's build whatever you want. And uh, we didn't get to uh, see through on that. So it is unfortunate, but, but I do agree. Um, getting yelled at by a partner for no reason. I think that this type of partner is used to dealing with people that if you just throw more money at them, they'll get the job done. And uh, sorry, engineering and timelines don't work that way. So uh, I think that was the biggest problem. Oh, very much. Because I remember it as well. They just said, well, okay, we'll double the pay. And we're like, I don't think you understand. Like this is... (laughs) This is going to fail, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you know we're not set up for success. But I also I also remember that I you know as part as part of my my video meetup group, I actually sent out a message without putting any names, saying, "Hey, if there's a project out there, the timeline seems very, very, very extreme. It's too good to be true, and that's all I'm going to say." And it it was interesting to have people come back to me and reflect on, "Yeah, that sounded like an awesome project, but it would it was guaranteed to fail, unfortunately." So. Well. Yeah, you know, that's what I love about Vancouver. We're all frenemies in the industry. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, very, very true. Very true. Well, Vinny, why don't I come back to you here? Because you didn't you didn't get to color it because David and I talked instead. Um, Vincent's famous, everyone, just so you know, that, that he doesn't say much in a meeting, but when he does, it's the best stuff anyone has heard in that meeting. So let me let me just warn you about that little piece of gold. Your but, expectation is setting up too high, but mostly. <laughs> yeah, but you noticed when I said that, both Jose and Vin, uh, and Josephine did this. So uh, they nodded, they nodded, they agreed. Um, Vinny, can you tell us maybe who, what's your fi- favorite project or favorite client, um, that favorite project that you've worked on uh, over, over this last, uh, oh my gosh nine years eight years mm-hmm. i think there are many projects that i liked the, maybe if you want to talk about fair one i would say it's uh, for this pc mm-hmm. i think first of all it's a very uh, reasonable client with a reasonable timeline and budget and everything and the scope was nice but i think being an engineer and being an engineering team the one thing that we really want to see is that our product is being at the hands of the customers. And you can show this to your friends and once you find your friends and family and everyone is using the same app and you can probably say, I made that app. That makes you happy. That's what makes engineers happy about their, their, their invention. So that's that's why I think it is a good one. And I think almost maybe all the household that's using Fortis PC have that app. So that that's the one thing that I'm very proud of and I, I like the client as well. So. Excellent, excellent. Josephine, same question. And I'm assuming this one's not the person from Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have quite a lot of favorite uh, projects and clients. So mm-hmm. I've been quite lucky, actually. Um, maybe I'll name a few. So our first one, we did it a long, long time ago when we first started. It's called Halloween Totem. So basically, it's an iPad game that lets you customize like a little totem. And, and the way you play is kind of like a Tetris. You kind of stack one on top of another. And uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And I think um, I really like this project because this one day uh, we got a mail from a dad saying that his uh, autistic son really enjoy playing the game and um, it really feels good knowing that like what we create make a positive impact to to a kid's life so that I love that my favorite <laughs> um, project and another um, one is uh, Sanglad. So Sanglad mm. is an uh, IoT company. They make uh, light bulbs uh, that works with a uh, security, oh, actually not works with, like a, a light bulbs that has a security camera or um, a speaker in it. And um, we did, a, uh, so the client came to us because um, uh, for some reason, uh, when they launched that, they were very successful in Asia and China, but when they tried to launch their product in North America, they ex- experienced a lot of returns. So they suspect that uh, there's something wrong with the onboarding process and that's why they came to us. And uh, so we did a lot of our UX research to validate this assumption. And uh, after um, uh, our our design and and, um, development, the product return rate dropped 50%. So I think it's a very good example to demonstrate how um, 
our design and dev can make a positive impact uh, uh, for, for, for our client business. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one is a, a recent one uh, is legible. So uh, legible is, uh, um, I would say, a Spotify for, for reading. So basically, you can stream um, any ebooks that you want to read on a web browser, and you can easily uh, publish um, uh, anything that you write on the web. And I, and the clients are very um, reasonable and easy to work with. And I really like the, the mission to, to bring democracy to you know, publishing and reading. So yeah, that's my top three favorites. <laughs> all of those, all of those great. Do, do you know what I loved about your first one? Is I think that was like the first and only app that you, David and I more or less did ourselves. I was head engineer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then we got smart and hired Vinny to do the programming instead. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I love that project too. Well, David, what, what about you? What was What's the one project or, or client that you've really enjoyed working with? Oh, I mean, there's so many. And, and I love how Josephine talked about it because it was based on the results and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could talk about like, uh, I really enjoyed Yervana, but I, I'm going to go about the, the because of the people and it's Harbor Air. Mm -hmm. We deal with some amazing, I mean, and, uh, Tom and, and everybody at Harbor Air are just fantastic. They, they're passionate. Of, um, what I love about them is we're passionate about technology and passionate. We, we love to have fun and everything, but I would literally say they are identical to us in the airline industry, like the culture wise and everything else. Like I've never met anyone that's angry there. I've never met anyone like they're just excited about what they're doing and, and they love it. And whenever I deal with them, I kind of like, Ooh, I'm secretly listening about the airplane stuff, you know, cause I'm kind of interested in that. And I know Tom's like, Ooh, tell me more about mobile development, you know? So there's a great crossover there. So I, I, I can't say enough about Harbor Air as, as a partner and things. So. Oh, for sure. For sure. Especially as they push their own industry with electric airplanes and all of these oh. things. I mean, it's super exciting. I was so happy to be invited to that, uh, to, to see it take off and everything. Oh. It was really cool. I bet. I bet. Senor Hernandez, how about the same question to you, sir? Well, it, when you're the fourth uh, to mention your favorite project, some of them are already taken. Um, <laughs> so Beanie mentioned 40s BC. It was, it was, it, it's, 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 a, it's a great client. It was a great project. But I would like to highlight um, YBR. And mm -hmm. the, the main reason was uh, we got to exploit one of our uh, best assets, which is uh, working with the client way before we design or develop anything, doing discovery. And in that particular project, um, uh, what I really enjoyed was in order to understand what the client was trying to achieve, we got to be... Uh, everywhere around the airport. So those areas that you're normally seeing from the other side, we were seeing how things happen on, on the back side. So um, it was super interesting to just walk through the, 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 the user and, and experience that uh, part. So I, I love that project. Well, that's interesting. I love, I love how you're not talking about the technology, but you're talking about witnessing the experience and the problem and then figuring out how to solve that through technology, you know, which is, which is, I think, cornerstone yeah. to the way we look at a problem from, you know, from a design and engineering and usability perspective. And I, I think that's, that's, that's super fascinating. Now, if I could talk about, I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I mean, there's some great projects out there, but one that I always really loved and the fact that I love that we're part of, um, because, you know, not only does it reach our, our vision of, of, um, you know, creating impact for a billion lives um, but or building software that impacts a billion lives but it, it's actually later um, and the reason why you know later Graham Ian and the team those guys they're great but I mean I got to witness that from an early stage uh, when I when I met Ian at the, at the hackathons and all that and to see such an amazing idea grow into such a great company um, and then you know for us to actually get to touch it and you know put 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 our own little skills into it. Um, I'm super proud of that. Like just super proud of that. But, but, you know, I, I would also say, and I'm not going to go into full details. I mean, another one that I'm super proud of um, is pixels because I got to see Vincent's magic. I mean, now some of the stuff that pixels can do, it's a lot, you know, out of the box, but, some of the problems you solve for this, for a great, you know, um, LA based or, uh, you know, American based client, Vinny, um, do, do you want, can you tell me a little bit about that project? Cause I thought that this one's so fascinating. Yeah, I think that was over six years ago when yeah. Find Out America come to us, they want to sell their artworks on, on the mobile app. And we were building the app, but nothing was all that fancy. I mean, we always want to make things more innovative. And one thing that we try to make is to actually preview the paintings on your own wall with the actual size and, and stuff. 
So that was the idea that we come up with, but it was six years ago and AR was not really a big deal. So I actually hack into everything, playing with OpenCV and use my knowledge that I learned from my master's program and I finally got the soft. So the end result was pretty impressive. I think it's actually the very first AI application that you can see the painting on your wall. And later on, IKEA and, and all the other apps have kind of similar features in their app. But that, that is one of the, the uh, app that I, I was most proud of. Uh, I agree. Do you, I, you know what I loved? Do you know, sorry, just quickly. What I loved about that app is our client, the client that we deal with, he's great. Sean is, is, yeah. is a really good guy at everything. But we had no idea they were, they filmed a commercial and it was playing all over America. And this was like a Super Bowl-esque sort of like style commercial. And we're like, why didn't he tell us about this? Because it showed off this, the technology that Vincent created. And it was so, so cool. So uh, yeah, we, we, I, I, I go back and I look at that on YouTube once in a while going, that's awesome. So yeah, yeah very proud you, moment. You know, the thing about Sean and about that project too, because I think that project took us to, you know, to another level is one thing is Sean taught me a lot because Sean, is a very good guy and he's very proud of his engineering and he's very, you know, this has to be perfect, which, which I think all projects should be. But at that point we were like, Oh, you know, let's just get it done. Let's get it shipped. You know, it was a little bit of a different uh, thing. And I remember one time he goes, there's a bug. Okay, Sean, what bug is this? And he goes, there's a memory bug. It slows down. And I'm like, well, what is it? He goes, when you rotate the iPad 50 times, it slows down. And I'm, I, I think it was David that says, but Sean, who does it? And his answer just coldly was, well, I did, Dave. <laughs> and it's like, well, you got to fix this then. I mean, that makes that makes so much sense. But, you know, that brought us to a whole different level of professionalism and understanding, you know, that, that you know, when a client really loves their product, we should love it the same. And we need to, you know, to deliver it at the same level. Um, well, I, I like how you say that, Chris, just quickly. I always, whenever we get new co-ops coming in or anything, I, we always go over the, you know, the, what, what is the standard that you want to set? Because from university to professional, there's such a huge difference. And I agree with you there that Sean set that standard for us early and we've met that standard and we continue to meet that standard. So I, I often think about, would this project make Sean happy? <laughs> and I think that's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> Oh, I, I, yes, I would agree. I would agree. Um, well, I would say since the Sean days, uh, you know, he helped with their evolution, but I would actually say one thing that we've done very successfully is brought in, I, I mean, I want to call it the extended management team. I mean, these are the people who, who do the really, really, really um, important stuff to make us take us to that next level. And in, in this, you know, I would talk about, you know, Mark Wilson and, uh, you know, Felipe and, and Nick and um, Mark uh, McHugh as well. Um, Josephine, can you tell me maybe a little bit about what Mark has done in terms of as the UX director? Uh, what, 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 what's impressed you by, by his work? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, Mark, our UX director, he started an initiative about one and a half years ago to level up our company, our UX maturity. And so he helps us to define a lot of our frameworks and work workshops uh, when it comes to our UX strategy and our discovery and uh, research and testing. And I think it really helps uh, rationalize uh, design with data and uh, attach it with a business result. And I really appreciate his help, could not have you know, done it without him. And I'd also like to extend the thanks to our designers, uh, Andrea and Sway, because they've been providing us a lot of uh, constructive feedback and um, uh, helps with the documentation as well. Big love, big love. I, I have to, I have to agree. Um, well, David, can you share a little bit about what Nick has brought uh, to to the team? I thought Jose would be the person to talk about Nick because Nick's brought, well, I mean, everyone in this room or everyone that's chatting yeah, here. Talk about he, Nick. Yeah, yeah, I can talk about Nick. I mean, yeah. Nick, Nick, Nick has, uh, so I'm going to do a little bit, but Jose, please take over because you work mm -hmm. very much with him. So, I mean, Nick's come in and he is that, again, person that's a, a professional with a smile that takes everyone around him to a next level. And and again, what I love about Nick is he, um, whenever we have reviews, he's also the person that everyone thanks and says that they brought them to the next level. But Jose, I think you should talk about Nick, honestly. Yeah, well, um, as part of that process improvement, I, uh, one of the things that um, I got the opportunity to work on is, is becoming a project manager for certain projects. So, um, I remember the, the, the first thing that we did is bring a consultant and 
uh, Magnus, outstanding PM, uh, that helped us set up the initial uh, phases of that process. And um, after after a while, it was it was very uh, apparent that we needed to bring a a, uh, a senior project manager to help us with with uh, our projects. And we had the opportunity to interview Nick. And um, I remember the first thing he told us after that interview was, I'm taking a course in Utah, and it's just to help uh, uh, to help me manage projects. Um, and he called it, it's just to develop my Jedi powers. And I said, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever you say. Uh, <laughs> and then I got to witness that in the first project. He is the type of person that uh, first relaxes everybody, makes sure that everybody's at the same level of understanding and uh, everything goes really smooth um, while he's executing. You think that, okay, that's going to make it mm, more like your friend instead of your project manager, but he's applying the same frameworks that any project manager will do, but without you even uh, noticing. And on top of that, he brings so much to our culture. Uh, he's always thinking about um, social causes. He's, um, he's, I would say, spearheading our CS, uh, CSR effort. Um, he's also um, constantly suggesting new things. Uh, one of the meetings that we all love, it's called Continuous Improvement. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was an idea that Brit, uh, Nick brought up. Um, another thing that uh, he's... He's been uh, constantly pushing forward this AI, AI services area. So, um, so it's just fantastic that uh, that we had we have him in the team. Very much so. See, I was, I was uh, the reason the reason why I asked uh, David to talk a little bit uh, about that is because I was going to ask Jose about our best friend in Toronto or in Ontario, Mark McHugh. And so I, yeah. I did I did have a plan with that. Um, why don't you Why don't you continue <laughs> about you know. The, 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 the positive energy and the, the just the professionalism and the damn workhorse side of, uh, of our friend Mark. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Mark and then you, you complete that because we both get the opportunity to work with him every day. Um, you complete so, me, Jose. <laughs> you complete me. <laughs> Mark is our business development manager uh, and um, he has been amazing from day one. One of the difficulties uh, that you typically have coming from the business world is it's 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 daunting and challenging understanding all the the jargon uh, that 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 we use in 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 technology consulting from the design aspects to the engineering pieces. So uh, Mark has been absorbing all this knowledge for the past year and breaking every possible record in terms of. Uh, um, learning and applying that learning and advising our clients with it. Um, so I remember one of the things that I do um, when we're uh, interviewing MBAs to bring every year is I ask um, the professors of the, of, the, of the program who could be a good option. And everybody told me Mark McCoo is the best one you can bring. Um, I remember specifically Paul Coven telling me um, that this was way ahead the average. And uh, I started to talk to him uh, in August to bring him in January and um, started to, to discuss how, how we, we were going to be working together. And it's been a joy since. He's just a, he's just a fantastic individual, extremely professional, um, like detail-oriented beyond belief. Um, and uh, we're just really, really, really happy to 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 have him. I, I I couldn't I couldn't agree more in that. And I would say, do you know what Mark is to me? Is he's the opposite of me, and I and I mean that in a total complimentary way. Like he's getting everyone's laughing because they're like, oh yeah, that's true. Because you know he's going to get the details done. He's going to he's going to make sure everything is read. Um, but the thing that I like best about him is even in the early days, is he calls me out on things and he does not a very diplomatic way going, no, you, you know, this is the way it should be done. And I'm the type of guy, you know, I've been doing this for years, man, come on, young guy. And you know what? Almost every single time he wins me over on that one too. And uh, I, I, I look forward to that continued push of just improving myself through, through, through his, uh, 
through his, uh, you know, just hard work and determination. And, you know, I know the growth is going to come from, from a lot of his energy. Um, Vinny, now you and Felipe are very different people, but I think together you create an amazing mm -hmm. um, engineering team. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Felipe's style and what he brings to the table? Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about Felipe. So he joined TTT a few years ago with a lot of experience already. Mm -hmm. I think he's done a couple of startups in Chile. When he came, he was one of our main iOS guys. Anyhow, he delivered uh, projects very successfully, being very responsible. I actually knew it wouldn't take long for him to become the, one of the leads in, in the engineering team. So some of the, I think you summarize it well, uh, Philippe and I are used, like we hold different philosophy in, in hiring and project delivery. So in terms of hiring, uh, I guess I mentioned earlier, I always try to hire the smart people, people with passion and all that stuff. But most of the time it's just maybe gut feelings and things like that. But for Philippe, he has a strict process. You need to screen the resume, have a phone call, do code challenge. So he has, he is a very process driven person. Mm -hmm. And that I think complement with me very well for the mm -hmm. engineering team. So that makes sure that the people we hire in high quality, same as in uh, project delivery, he is a big fan of unit testing, uh, testing framework automations and documentation. Those are the things that has been brought by Philippe and mm -hmm. I feel give a big kudo to him on those things. Very good, very good. Uh, I, and I, and I, I think agree. besides that also, he care a lot about the team members. Mm -hmm. uh, he always try to protect the team members from like unreasonable requests from external clients and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he, I think, I think that on that front, he is a very good manager. For sure, for sure. And, and you know what, I also say he's, he's lucky. I mean, the engineering time's lucky to be buoyed by, you know, talents like uh, Goku and Sahil mm -hmm. and Michi and Lair. And well, I, I mean, I could go on forever. Um, but, uh, you know, we're just we're just really, really blessed. Um, and, you know, the, the one thing that I actually wanted to say that that, you know, both both Felipe and Nick brought to the table, which is actually on the sales side, which is interesting. I mean, Jose talked about the CSR. But I think one thing that 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 really changed the way we do business was our scorecard. And, and, and I think they and their souls of, you know, trying to find importance and impact in what we do is part of what that scorecard is. And, and, and for those who don't know, we, we, TTT has a scorecard that basically determines if we want to even do the project or not. Like it has to, it has to meet specific needs. And I, I couldn't thank, you know, those two more for helping direct that scorecard to, to really allowing us to have not just a conscious, but also have, you know, a reason, a raison d'etre to, to, to do the work we do. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I, again, look forward to the continued push as, 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 as the company grows and uh, blossoms underneath of, of them um, just as much as under us. Now, Jose, I'm, I'm going to bug you a little bit about this, but what is the importance for us? I mean, a lot of, some people know, but some people don't know. We have innovation department and we create our own products. Why do we do this? Well, everybody asks us that, but um, I think it's important to, uh, for two reasons. First, it's part of the nature of the company. Um, I think Beanie addressed this when he was talking about pixels, but we're always looking to do something innovative and something that uh, we've never seen before. The second one is probably the, the business reason, which is, uh, from a from the, on the services perspective, you're going from one product uh, or one project to the other. And what we like to do is have a bit more stability, uh, bringing revenue from a product. Um, and that's the, the, the logic behind uh, creating our own innovation lab. So to, to spearhead that effort, we have, I, I, I would say the, the best person possible. Oh yeah, uh, Amer, who who has done a, a, a fantastic job. Another uh, MBA recruit um, that just uh, and the, the way I explain what he has done is we all learn this uh, entrepreneurial frameworks during the MBA and the, the, the in theory the best way to go about developing a product, uh, even adding design thinking or Google X methodologies to that. But Amr just always managed to 
take it to another level. So he created our own product development process, and uh, we've been experimenting with different things since then. Um, and that's uh, that's one area that really excites us all. Oh, yeah. We see that that's going to bring uh, major growth in 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 the coming years. Oh yeah, no, I'm 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 super excited. I mean, the thing I love about Amher's, um uh, presentations, because I have never come across someone that does this so well in terms of, um, you know, his PowerPoint presentations is you got your questions after and he goes, oh, you mean the answer I already have an appendix E, F, L, G. I mean, he has everything thought out. I have I have not come across anyone who who spends so much time thinking about every single angle as as Amber. And, and you know what? I'm excited not only about the project we're launching with the Shop Studio Live, which is something that we're going to be tickling you all with pretty soon, uh, but also the next iteration um, and how he's going to bring that whole department uh, to, to, to life as, as, as we know it. Um, I'm pretty sure Amber's actually psychic. What I want to do is ask, like, <laughs> like right out of the old Johnny uh, Carson show where he opens up an envelope and he, he kind of says, I want to ask some question that has nothing relevant to what he's doing just to see if he will answer that. Because I, 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 there's this probably an 85% chance he will, and it will be in his slides. So That's such a truth. Yeah. That's such a truth. Well, here, here, he's, so impre- he's so impressive in that sense. Uh, I remember I was present in one of the um, – and one of the pitches that he did for for angel investors, and typically those presentations are harsh. They 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 try to poke every hole, make sure that uh, you thought through everything, and uh, identify any potential mistake that you might have done. I've never heard a group of investors just congratulating someone because he had fifteen slides of appendixes just ready to answer any possible question. And uh, it was fantastic. So that's the type of person Amr is. And, and we're blessed to have have him as part of the team. I, I gotta say, I gotta say, um, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close 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 this off with with one important question, okay? And 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 Vin, I'm gonna start with you with this one, and then go across. Mm-hmm. If you could go back in time and join an exec meeting from five years ago, what would the advice you'd give yourself? This is a tough one, and you picked me as the first one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I remember five years ago is basically the time when I became the VP of engineering. And if I were to give advice to myself back then, I think I learned the lessons the hard way. Um, so there's a saying goes that when the best developer got promoted, as a manager, you lose your best developer, but you got the worst manager. So that is kind of what happened. And the transition took a long time, but it was a completely different job. Uh, Being a good developer versus a good team lead and manager are just different things. And it took me a long time to realize that. And I hope if I had the chance, I will put more emphasis on uh, maybe people management and help to grow the culture and team and all of those uh, those stuff. So that that would be the one piece of advice that I will give myself. I, I, That's so I, well I, said. <laughs> it's it's typical Vincent again. I say he doesn't say much, but when he does, it's always gold. Um, yeah. Joe, Joe, can I can I jump on you? Same question. Advice you'd give five years past. <sighs> I think um, I don't, don't don't work too hard because <laughs> I felt like like um yeah I I think in the past like five years I sometimes I I, I work a lot of overtimes but mm-hmm. uh, actually it's not very good for you know my mental health and and I don't know maybe uh, subconsciously it set up an unrealistic expectation for my teammates so um you know if I could go back in time I'll advise myself you know everything is going to be okay we're going to survive you know uh past our fifth year so just relax and you know uh trust that um you know everyone on the team was very capable things and will be all right <laughs> very good very good David same question well, and, and, and thank you, Joe, that I'm glad you're able to recognize that. Um, for me, it would be um, don't ignore crazy. So, and, and the reason, and I'm going to give Chris a compliment on this. Chris says some pretty 
outlandish things at times. I but know he what you're says, talking about. Yeah, no, no. And <laughs> there's so many times where I just look, oh, what the hell is he talking about? But he's always had vision. And I'll give him this. It always, it actually, some things are crazy. Don't get me wrong. But don't yeah. ignore it because it can lead to amazing things. And I'll say that his vision has led us to kind of where we are today for many things. So at the same time, when people have ideas in the office, be patient and try to understand what they're saying because there were so many times where I would just go and walk away that I, I shouldn't have. So that would be if I was looking back five years ago, that's what I would chill, tell myself. You should, you should have done that 10 years ago too. Just saying, just saying. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Jose, share some wisdom with your five years in the past self, please. Yeah, For me, it would be um, take time to understand the style and the tempo of, of of your coworkers. I, I think um, there are there are two reasons for that. Uh, sometimes when um, you're trying to make something happen, you are either going too fast or too slow. And if those the tempo does not fit the team, you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, you're going to make uh, make a lot of uh, people feel uncomfortable. So that would be for me uh, one of the things that I learned. Um, in those in those past five years and the other thing is if you do that you will be able to identify if there are some uh, uh mismatches in the team I, I think one of the things that we've learned uh with with time is we used to uh, uh because of the culture we used to work with people that were not necessarily the perfect fit for ttt and um uh, quickly we've we've modified that and identified if it's not a great fit, fit is it's better to part ways and uh, and uh, just to continue with team members that are in the same uh, symphony. So that would be my advice. Very good, very good. Well, if I'm going to ask myself, and I'm just going to pretend I did, um, I, I would actually go back and tell them, you know what? Don't take it personally when people quit. Don't take it personally, um, because when I when I hear um, you know that someone's found an awesome opportunity and they're on to a next thing, I, I, I really I feel depressed for a couple of days. And and you know what? It's not necessary because it should be celebrated that people you know maybe they even launched their career through us and then jumped on to you know big bigger things and they're going to make big impact. Um, and and the reason why I would actually tell myself that is every single person who has left still still has a linkage to us. They still come back. They still do events. They, there really is something that we've touched in their lives to be a part of it. And, you know, I'm proud of, of, of all of us here to that we've created something like that. And I don't want to be sad when someone says they're, they're, they're heading out, they're, they're going to do their other thing. I want to cheer for them. And I, I, I and I just want to have an open heart for it. Cause, cause honestly, I think that's a, um, a real challenge when you, when you do consider everyone here to be family. Um, is that you feel like, well, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's an end to the family, but really it's just another chapter. David, well you, yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny cause you're touching on something. I, I'm the same way I get flabbergasted. It's almost like uh, you're breaking up like, and, but Jose always saw it in very good perspective and he saw it as, as the opportunity and it, and it's so true. You have to see it that way. But I mean, if I was going to go the other way and, and one of the things that I'm most proud of and it kind of touches on this is what, what I'm proud of, of, of TTT has become. It's been an engine that's allowed people to have their first foot into Canada. And I, I won't tell you how many times I have signed uh, some documentation for the government of Canada or filled out forms or anything like that. And so say this person is not going to be with us, but I will always be part of their first steps into Canada. And for me, I couldn't be prouder. And if I, if I could say that this company has created one thing, that's one of the greatest things I could say we've created. So opportunity, opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity. And so, yeah. I love that. I truly love that. Well, Vincent, Jose, Josephine, brother, David, you know, I love, I love all you guys. So you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna blush or be surprised to hear that. Um, but I just want to thank you for, for, you know, closing out what, what I would consider to be a, a super fun uh, 15th episode of, of the, the afternoon tea. And uh, you know, I, I look forward to season two starting in January. I'm sure 
Pauline and Aaron are already getting their their elf uh, their elf stockings or whatever it is that, that that Christmas people do ready for 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 getting prepared for that for that next season of of surprises and uh, great guests. But uh, you know, I really I really enjoy just walking down the lane and uh, you know really sharing the time that we've shared together. So thank you for for being open and uh, you know uh, conscious of just uh, our experience together. Yeah, hopefully next year we can do it in person <laughs> rather than over Zoom. Yeah, I, I exactly. couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Maybe somewhere tropical too. Just saying, you know, just saying. But uh, <laughs> but but thank. Well, I kind of like Josephine's background here. I I, I mean, just I the, the Christmas tree and the Christmas house. I mean, well, let's all come to my house. <laughs> done. <laughs> you know, honestly, it looks like the mall where I grew up, going to the mall to sit on Santa's lap in Richmond. That was <laughs> Josephine's place right now. I'm just I'm just honestly flabbergasted by it. But 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 you know, Joe, Vinny, uh, Jose, David, thank you for for again being a big part of my life and a big part of our adventure. And I, I look forward to the extended trip that we'll be taking uh, along with everyone else and and all the uh, you know again the, the the people who have listened to us today i want to thank you for for, for spending time with us and uh, i i look forward to continuing telling um you know or helping share really really interesting stories of canadian entrepreneurs and uh, um you know this is a start of something really great i think so thank you and uh, merry christmas and ho 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 and all of that thank you guys Bye. thank you yeah